Hello and welcome to today's vlog. Hi. Ha ha. Now. What's that? Ha what? ha. Ha ha. <laughs> I think I was doing my Alan Partridge impression. Ha ha! <laughs> Welcome to today's vlog. Now you will have remembered that last vlog we got to Cosgrove. Having been at Stoke Brewer, we went to Cosgrove and we are traveling, we've been traveling south uh, towards Milton Keynes and Leighton Buzzard. In fact, we were planning to go further than Leighton Buzzard. What's happened? Bad weather. We dived into a marina in Milton Keynes and we stayed there, did some editing. Did some washing. <laughs> Did some washing. Do all those sort of things when you get into a marina. Mm. As we've missed off a part of the all the way there, we will film some most of the all the way back. Don't confuse them now. In other words, the bits we've missed. So yeah. um, we went down through Milton Keynes, as I say, we stayed a few nights there, and we went to Leighton Buzzard. We stayed a couple of nights at Leighton Buzzard, and the start of this particular vlog we're turning round at Grove Lock. Just just before, just Grove, before Lock. Grove Lock, there's like a little, it says you can wind. It's actually not an official winding hole. It's an old arm somewhere leading off that you can turn round rather than going down to two locks further down and yeah. then turning round. But that was, that, that was made a little bit difficult, wasn't it? We had a bit of a, pr yeah, oh, I'd say a problem. It was a bit tricky because there was lots of boats moored up around there. So. It's always, when it's an unofficial winding hole and you're sticking your nose into an arm, there was, it, it there can was be some a little, workboats there, it can be a little tricky. Yeah, you'll see that. Yeah. Um, so what you'll see now with the next couple of vlogs, including this one, is the journey coming back. We've now said goodbye to our friends Lorraine and Peter on Skewiff. Bye. So we're all on our own some. So you'll see us going through double locks. For some reason, we're on our own. Well, I think it was, when we filmed this, it was after bank holiday week. So uh, a lot of the canal was empty. Yeah, it went very quiet then, didn't it? But what you will see as we approach Milton Keynes and that sort of area, a lot more wide beams. Lots of. Wide I've beams. never seen so many in all my life. Lots most of, of most of them were moored up. Yeah, yeah. And um, oh, fantastic sight. Yeah. But I don't know. I've never seen them before. I've just seen the odd one in an odd marina that we've been in, yeah. and a couple of our friends have got them, and of course the Crick Show. Yeah. But no, and it was like. Whoo! Yeah, um, it's good fun for him anyway. It's, sl it's slow moving because there's lots of moorings all the way through Milton Keynes, all the way to Leighton Buzzard. So it is a bit slow going. So anyway, without further ado, this is us turning. Well, we've just turned after or before Grove Lock coming back to Leighton Buzzard. So this is the unofficial winding hole. It's a little arm, I think, going off, but it's nice of um, CRT contractors to moor two work boats right by the side, breasted up, which make it difficult to wind. And now we're heading back up towards Lake and Buzzard. And the sun's come out. You can see they've been quite busy. I don't know whether they've been getting this stuff off the bottom of the canal or what, but um, it's all sorts of stuff in here, isn't there? Crikey, somebody's three-piece suite. I think that's what you might call a doer-upper. It looks like it's um, a burnt-out shell. Somebody's been very unfortunate. Look, there's a flying narrowboat ahead. Because it's on top of another one. Ah, no, actually, I think it's on a hard standing. <laughs> I was joking, everybody. Something that is not uncommon around these air parts. You know, wide beam. This one looks very smart. You'll be seeing a lot of those. Definitely a 
boat yard, but I haven't got a name in my Nicholson's guide, so I don't know what it's called. I think it's called the Boat Shop. And as you can see, they've got several boats up on hard standing. Uh, welding, engineering and painting. There we go. This boat looks quite unusual. I don't know if you can see the... Um, configuration on the back of that one. I've seen one of those before somewhere, recently. Looks like a paddle steamer at the back. Very unusual. I'd like to see one going on the canal. I've seen one on like the Thames and rivers. So this is where we've been moored up for the last couple of days. If anybody's nipped in our spot while we've been down to um, turn around. But yeah, lovely little spot. There's a walk into the park, which then eventually leads you into the town centre of Leighton Buzzard. Lots of independent shops, all the big shops, like Tesco's, Aldi, Lidl and that, were all on the outskirts which leaves the town centre free for all those little independent shops. So yeah, we were in there. Like I say, nice little spot. We've got to do some rubbish, get some water. There's allegedly an L sand point here, but I've not been able to find it when we walk. But I'm assured there is one by the rubbish bin somewhere. We'll have to have a look. For anybody who was moored at North Kilworth Marina when we were there, you might remember this boat on brokerage. We met the owner the other night. Nice chap and his dog. And that's the footbridge that takes you from the housing estates on the left to the parks and all the walks on the right. And you can get into town from that way as well. Some pretty gardens at the back of the houses here that edge onto the canal. Very tidy, very colourful as well. It must be nice to have the canal at the bottom of your garden. Somewhere else to go, isn't it? You've got your house, you've got your garden, and then you've got a little bit at the back where you can be secluded from the house and be almost in another world looking out at the boats going past. Marvellous. bit windy at the moment. Ooh. Going into the main part of uh, Leighton Puzzle now. This bit, this side of the bridge, south, um, heading south from Leighton Puzzle, we're obviously heading back north, um, are where all the 14 day moorings are. Um, there are two moorings by the bridge, I believe, which are on rings these pins and the further away you go there's some armco which is where we were as I say the last few nights but the moorings right by Tesco you've got a two-hour mooring to do a bit of shopping 
and then past that there are uh, for um, people who have booked a mooring The uh, Tesco mooring. Two hours you get there for a bit of sharpen. And these are the long term permit holders down here, so you can't moor anywhere along this bit. Shame, really. This is the closest bit to you shopping. But then the ones the other side, south of here, where we were, actually get you into the town easier through the park. I'm pretty sure years and years ago there weren't as many of, of these as there are now which just goes to show I suppose the amount of boats that are now licensed on the canals. And lots of people want to be on a towpath mooring There is water here, there is an L sand point does work, by the way, if you're heading this way. It is just by the bridge. Uh, there is a water point there as well, and bins just a bit further along. But it's an awkward place to moor up. Um, you're probably better off doing everything apart from the water from the Tesco's moorings. And then nipping down to the bridge to get to the tap. As you can see, these moorings go on for quite a while. Now, just a bit further here, this is Linslade, technically, you get to Wyvern Shipping. And no, they don't send boats out across the Atlantic, it is a hire fleet base very big one actually and quite old well established I think it's still run by the same family we've hired a boat from here in fact little story I know not all of you like little stories but here's a little story so we hired a boat from here this was the last time we went to the Crick boat show funny enough we decided to hire a boat from here because you can get from here up to Crick quite easily uh, within a matter of days so we hired a boat for a week and when we got down here we told the boat yard where we were going and they said oh actually if you're going to the Crick show would you mind taking some of our leaflets for us and in exchange for doing that we'll give you some money off the higher charge now not wanting to give up a deal like that we said fine so they gave us some leaflets gave us a freestanding display we went to Crick, we moored up, we put the display on top of the boat with the leaflets and left them there for people to take if they wanted them. And I think there was a sign in the window that says, hire this boat, or something like that. F very good deal that was. Um, and it got us moored up at Crick. We got to see the show, it was the last time we went to see the show, before obviously this most recent one. Yeah, now it's Friday morning, late morning, so most of the boats have been have come back. It's have to be back by nine o'clock, as we well remember. This is the end of the bank holiday week, by the way, in case you're wondering when we filmed this. So this is the Friday of the bank holiday week. Most of these boats have come back. There's a few more still out on the cup. So they're being clean, prepped and ready to go out again. Always looking for seasonal workers, so if you fancy a job cleaning or giving tuition, if you're an experienced boater, drop them a line, April to October. Wyvern shipping, there you go.
be there all day. Was that the gate paddle? Was that the gate paddle? Where is it, Mark? There's only one paddle. Can we see the other one? Oh, I wasn't sure whether there was a ground paddle and a gate paddle. No, I'll have to swim yeah. across. Yeah, you'll have to. <laughs> on some of these. Yeah, it's a tea time. <laughs> on some of these wider locks, you usually find that there's a ground paddle and a gate paddle. The ground paddle usually takes up most of the water, either in or out, and then the gate paddle just does the final little flourish. But this particular lock, Clayton lock, only seems to have one paddle mechanism on the gate itself so you have to do both sides but we are roped across on a center line if you can see that so we don't go bobbing around in the lock usually handy this technique for if you single boat when you go in up It's not so bad. It's not so bad coming down because the water's being sucked out. But um, when you're going up and there's a big wash of water coming in, it can push your boat bashing side to side in the lock if you haven't got a centre line thrown around a bollard. And obviously your lock baity doing it nice and gentle for you. It's one thing I will say about Jan, she's nice and gentle and she's loving the sunshine. <laughs> and don't forget if you are coming down with a centre line on a bollard, don't hold on to it too tight, let it go as the boat goes down the lock. this way Jan only needs to open one gate on this side to let me out Onwards to Solbury.
going down on the job again. There we go, we are at Solbury now, at the Three Locks. Pub's called the Three Locks, quite an imaginative title that really, considering there's <laughs> three locks next to it. <laughs> yeah. You may be wondering what that building is that we moored next to or in front of. When we first, because obviously we, what you're seeing is the journey back. back. Um, when we went down, there was no, it was a weekend and there was no builders there, nobody on site or anything. And looking at it, we naturally assumed that it was um, an industrial unit or of some description because it, it's so big and it's also very close, very close to very the, close to the tow towpath. Path. Um, and I thought well, it's going to be some business, isn't it? But, you know, maybe it's a, a cafe, maybe it's a, a float by McDonald's or something. I don't know. Yeah, but I got nosy, didn't I? So and anyway, I now resist. obviously we, we didn't ask because we there was nobody to ask. Since we've obviously gone down and come back and we're now here again, Jan decided, whilst I was flying well, the drone, I saw, I saw the to workman. Ask, ask a workman and said, what are you building? And this is apparently going to be a house. A house, a private house. It's private massive. House. Apart from massive. it being massive, a mahoosive house, let's hope that the owners are pro canal and narrowboats because those are the only moorings. You can moor a bit further back, away from the pub and away from the lock landing. Um, but they get a bit wild and free and you've got to put pins in. Um, yeah, and if you want to go to the pub, they're the ideal. They the, probably uh, fit about six, seven boats yeah, you can there. probably get, a, yeah, if that, yeah. I would think. Uh, so, you, yeah, you can get about half a dozen boats um, and they're on bollards and, and you, uh, some armco down there. Um, so, like I say, let's just hope the people who move in are love canals and love boating because, you know... Well, they've built it there, so... <laughs> let's be honest, you're going to have engines running, obviously not late at night. But you are going to have boaters, effectively, when you open your kitchen window and look out, yeah. you, like Jan says, you'll be able to shake hands with the boaters who are there. It's bizarre, very bizarre anyway, to have that Anyway, that's close. up to them, isn't it? We'd just like to say thank you to all your new subscribers. Thank you. Yes, lovely. Welcome aboard. More, <laughs> more. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed this vlog. If you have, thumbs up for a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. And don't forget, when you have subscribed, press the bell icon. Ding! Oh, lovely. How resonant is that? <laughs> and YouTube will notify you next time we upload a vlog. Isn't technology wonderful? In the meantime, stay safe, everybody. Happy cruising. Hope to see you next time. Bye! Bye! Bye.